getting ready to work on the trail some more. Picked up another pair of loppers. These are the best loppers I've ever used. I've been using these here for, I don't know, I don't even know how long, a long time. I've cut a lot of trails in my days and I've used a lot of different loppers and these are the best. They also make them with a hand, handles extend to give you more leverage. I had those before, but you tend to go for a bigger stock because of the leverage. And uh, I kind of abuse them, and it doesn't work out that good. But for someone that doesn't have any strength, you know, maybe a woman or whatever is cutting up some stuff, that would give you that little bit of extra leverage I need. And it works good as long as you don't go for too much stuff. <laughs> but these here are really good. I always mark my tools with some fluorescent tape. Here, Frankie's gearing up to go. He had to babysit his baby sister for a minute, and he doesn't like it. <laughs> I tried spray painting my tools, but the paint doesn't stay on anything. Just give them a wrap of fluorescent duct tape, and it works great. And I'll tell you, it's a tool saver, because many, many times I went to leave without my stuff, and then I saw it because of the tape. Yep. So into the woods I go. <laughs> I'm going to put these in straight vinegar, let them soak for, I don't know, a day or so. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> that I found these little trays and the plastic. Everybody said, oh, you should have found some vinegar at the dump. <laughs> Throw some rubber gloves on so my hands don't get all stained with that rust. We'll just take a look in there. <laughs> you can see some of the rust has already bled into the vinegar there. See how it comes off. That isn't looking too bad. Yep. Before I put it on the heat, I'm going to dry it off and I'm going to coat it with oil. I'm going to treat it the same way that I do a cast iron pan. If I take a rusty pan and I put it through the vinegar process and I get it down to the bare iron and I put that on the heat, it's going to instantly coat with rust, a very fine coat of rust. It's almost instantaneous. As soon as that bare iron hits the heat, it rusts. So I'm getting the water off of it. I'm going to coat it with oil. Then I'm going to put it on the heat. This is just olive oil. I'm going to wipe it real good with olive oil. Both sides. The first time that I put a cast iron pan through the vinegar process, put it on the heat first, <laughs> and I saw all that rust appear, that was the last time. Got some heavy gloves. I'm using a rag. Too much with this, I'm going to melt the bristles off of it. So, I'm just giving it a coating. Just let it bake for a few minutes. I'm going to keep repeating that process. In total, I'll probably use up about this whole cup of oil. And it should be done. We're going to break it in with a rack of ribs. <laughs> See that? That looks great. Well, the grill is in action. Check this out. Yeah. Look at those grates. Nice and black and shiny. Got some ribs going. Hooking them up nice here. Yeah. 
I love our dump. <laughs> About a year or two ago I showed you how I built a mouse trap with a five gallon pail and a beer can. Very effective setup. The only drawback to it is if the peanut butter wasn't spread evenly on the can, it wouldn't spin very well. And some folks that were building them were putting the can too high at the top of the pail and the mice would climb up the ramp and lick a lot of the peanut butter off the can. So made some changes and I'll show you a much easier setup that's more effective. I'm going to show you two different ways that I do it. It's no fail setup. I set two buckets out two nights ago. I'm going to go check them now and that is just with water and seed and then I'm going to change it up a little bit with some peanut butter and I'll show you what I got going on. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, seven mice out of that one. Fantastic. This one here. One, two, three. There's a chipmunk. That's it. So for the first trap, all I did was this. That's it. I fill a pail about 40% with water. Then I throw in a couple of handfuls of sunflower seeds. They float on top. I put up a little ramp like this, and that is it. Okay? The mice come up here. They look down. To them, it looks like a bucket full of seeds. Ha! Huh. They jump in, it's game over. As you can see, I got 10 mice and a chipmunk in two nights with two pails. Pretty obvious that it works. The only thing is, much after two nights, your success is going to go way down because the seeds get all waterlogged and the, the water will start to stink with the dead mice floating in it. Okay, so if you're not going to tend your bucket every night or every other night, definitely add the peanut butter because the peanut butter is going to keep on attracting them where the bucket without the peanut butter is going to lose attraction within a couple of nights. So I've got this little piece of PVC here and I'm just going to spread some peanut butter on it. This works a lot better than the beer can because you don't have to worry about getting it on there evenly because we're spinning in the other direction with it. I'm using a stiff piece of wire. This is one of those wires that you use to hold up fiberglass insulation between two floor joists. You can run a fish line through here. Use your imagination. Use a piece of wire from those annoying election signs you see polluting the roadside. <laughs> so, the wire comes through the hole, through my piece of PVC, in through the hole. I'm going to put this in the center. This is not touching the water, and it's not way up here. I don't want the mice climbing the pail, staying on the ramp, and licking at it. I want them to jump in, okay? So they're going to jump in for that, and that's just going to spin in the drink they go. This will keep attracting them even after this gets sour if you have a bunch of dead mice in there. That's about it. That's all you need. A bucket and a ramp. Fantastic. I'm just heading out. I got one stand left to do some cutting at, and then I'll be done. And I got one more stand to put up, but that one is not going to need any cutting. This is a stand I put up last year, and it's right in the thick stuff, and it's too thick for bow hunting. Right in the spruce and moss. 
this goes to my tree stand. You see the pie plate? <laughs> Those little table talk pie plates. Boy, do they collect light when you shine a flashlight at them. You go there and get that done. And this stand will be good to go. All these little dead branches, sometimes you can't see them in the dim light. You get a day where it's real foggy, visibility is not that good, you're focused on the deer. The arrow gets deflected and then you have a bad hit. I don't want to be wounding one, you know. I can't climb up there, so the pole saw is the way to go. These things are so handy. You wouldn't be able to do this without it. It's a really good one. I'm just gonna take these and hang them on my stand. Helps to break up a little bit of outline. This stuff is very aromatic too, which helps anything you can do to mask your human scent is a plus. Yeah, I got a nice clear window through there, through there, pretty decent there. I'm going to get those dead branches down, then all of this stuff here I'm going to leave for cover. And I got a lot of cover behind me. So I'm going to get all of those dead branches cut. So I got some opportunities through there. Maybe I'll cut a few there so I could shoot down through there if I need to. That looks pretty good. Now I just got to get my gear together. And this stand will be all set, ready to go. That'll do. Alrighty, I'm gonna go through a few quick questions and wrap it up. First question, what do I look for when choosing a breeder? Uh, a lot of questions like that coming in because you know we have a new puppy. Well, you're probably expecting an answer where I'm looking for a certain pedigree, you know, champion bloodlines, a good working dog, things like that. But to be honest, I really don't give a fiddler's fart if the dog is even registered. I'm not a dog breeder, so when I'm looking for a dog, I'm just looking for a good companion. And when we were looking for a Border Collie 10 years ago, I just wanted a certain look. I wanted a patch on one eye, I liked the big white cape, and I really liked the tricolor look. And Frankie was perfect. We just bought him off some little podunk farm in New York. He's been a great companion for me. When we were looking for a new puppy this time, all I was looking for is some, I wanted a female and I wanted one that was very similar looks to Frankie and Tildy is. She's pretty close. The only thing she's not going to be real shaggy like Frankie and I prefer the shaggier look. But enough time's gone by so we decided to get a puppy. And yes, if Frankie's up for it further down the line, we probably will breed him because I'd like a, a Frankie puppy. While we're on the subject of dogs, lots of people asking me if I could do a video on dog training, and I will. And I've already started filming for that, but I just don't know when I will have that out. Lots of questions coming in about the surgery that I'm going to have. Um, I generally don't talk about this kind of stuff. I'm not one of the, I'm not a type of person who just dumps all my problems on Facebook and things like that because I can't stand it. But I mentioned my surgery because a lot of people ask me, how come I'm not doing this? How come I haven't got that done and this, that, and the other thing? And it's because of this issue that I have. And it's been a lot of running around and we don't have a doctor right around the corner. 
you know, even to upload the video. I mean, it's a trip to town, out of here, and it's a, it's a process sometimes. There's pros and cons of living out in the woods. But a lot of folks have showed concern, so I'll, I'll just give you a, a little idea. Uh, yeah, the, the, the surgery could end up being pretty serious. It depends how things are once they get in there. Um, I'm just trying not to dwell on it, you know. But it's possible that the doctor might have to cut behind my ear and fold my ear back forward, rather, and remove some bone and go in there and possibly work alongside my brain and a lot of the sensitive nerves and remove a mass that's in there that's causing problems. And if I don't have the surgery, it's going to cause worse problems. So I have to do it. But I'm just waiting right now to see if my insurance is going to cover everything and get scheduled for a surgery date. The problem with that is if it's done soon, it's going to ruin all my hunting season. And if it's done later, we're going to be snowed in up here and even carrying buckets of water from the well. There's going to be some issues there. So we're just going to take it day by day and see what happens. And that's just life. That is just life. Stuff happens. Remember in the video I made... Uh, Back to my roots, part two, I think, where I was saying I'm 51 years old. I don't know how many good years I have left. I want to live and fulfill all my dreams. I always dreamed about living up here, and I'm going to do it. Well, I'm doing it. That's just the way you got to handle life, because I don't want to be looking back with regrets. And life is going to throw you the shit. It will, okay? And the older you get, the more of it's coming at you. So live now and live it up. It's just life. We're all going to have problems. Yeah, so you just deal with it. So I'm going to do one more quick one before I call it quits for the day. Um, people are asking about my Polaris Ranger, and can I do a video on that and show all the pros and cons? And I will do that. I have my 2017 Polaris Ranger, and I have my 08. And when I have my 08 back here in New Hampshire... I will do a side-by-side -side comparison of my side-by-sides. So that's it for now, folks. <laughs> All the best to you, and God bless. Frank and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss